I am Dr. Kavita Chintala, Clinical Director and Senior Pediatric International Cardiologist at Care Hospitals, Hyderabad. We will be discussing the treatment of an atrial septal defect and its follow-up. An atrial septal defect is a congenital heart defect that is present since birth. It is a hole in the wall between the two upper chambers of the heart called left atrium and right atrium. So on account of this hole, the blood from the left side of the heart, the red blood from the red, red left side of the heart goes to the right side of the heart and then goes to the lungs. So this is what we call a left to right shunt. Now how is this hole treated? It depends on the location, depends on the size of the hole and the age of the presentation. Now when we find small holes in young children, we often leave them to follow because some of them do close spontaneously. Now it has to be uh, mentioned that in inside the womb, in utero, everyone has an atrial septal defect so to call because there is a hole in the upper chambers of the heart in a fetal circulation because that is mandatory for the fetal circulation for the blood to go from the right to the left side. Now after birth, immediately after birth, this hole is present and it will take a few days or sometimes even few weeks for it to close. Now, when it doesn't close and a large defect is present in its place, we call it an atrial septal defect. So, young infants, we follow atrial septal defects until they are maybe, you know, two to and a half years of age. And if it is persistent and large enough to cause the right side of the heart to enlarge, that is when we want to treat or close this hole. Now, there are a small section of infants who are younger than one year who may be very young but still showing symptoms of uh, atrial septal defect like, you know, uh, getting repeated lung infections or those that are on a ventilator for some other cause may not be able to come out of ventilator. Such children, we often close them at a young age. But otherwise, typically two and a half to three years is the right age for closing the atrial septal defect. Now, of course, when we find an atrial septal defect in an older child, like in a teenager or even an adult, which is not uncommon, we often find uh, ASDs detected for the first time during adulthood due to an abnormal examination or presence of shortness of breath or palpitations. It can be picked up in adulthood as well. So, how do we treat these ASDs? The ASDs are treated based on the location also. There are some which are present in the inferior part of the atrial septum, uh, that is the inferior ASDs. Those are usually close to the valves that are between the atrium and the ventricle, so usually are not amenable for um, device closure. So these are the ones that go to surgical closure. Then the ASDs in uh, other locations, the most common is the middle part of the uh, septum is the hole, that is called the secondum ASD. And these are usually amenable to device closure. Now device closure is a non-surgical method. It is also called a percutaneous device closure or what we call a transcatheter device closure. So it is the most common way we treat atrial septal defects in this day and age and even large ASDs can be closed by this method. Now the advantage of this method is that there are no cuts. There is no cutting of your chest or cutting of your heart. There is no heart lung bypass machine. So this is done in a cath lab in a beating heart in an awake patient. So we basically enter the heart through a peripheral vein, a vein usually in the groin. We enter it, we enter the heart, we enter the hole through various uh, you know, equipment, what we call hardware, and measure the size of the hole, check the pressures and everything. And, and then from through these narrow catheters, we send devices which are flattened. So these devices are made of some wire meshes with some material. They are able to be flattened out into the catheter. We go inside the heart and open out the devices. So they are sitting on either side of the hole and closing the atraceptal defect nicely. So this procedure is um, short. You know, we can do this procedure in half an hour. The recovery to the patient is very quick. The patient is able to go home the next day, sometimes even the same day. And the post-procedure complications are very few. So this is the method of choice. These patients need to be on six months of antiplatelet therapy. But this is the procedure of choice for those defects that are amenable to device closure. Now there are sometimes uh, ASDs that are very large or located as I said in the inferior portion of the septum or in the upper portion of the septum or in the near the inferior vena cava. Those may not be amenable to device and may require surgical closure but in the recent times because of advancing technology even the superior VSDs called sinus venosus ASDs we are able to close through the catheter route. 
Now when a surgery is required for an atrial septal defect, it will be an open heart surgery with a sternal cut and, and a heart will be cut, it will be put on bypass and the hole is closed by different prosthetic materials. Now we are able to do a minimally invasive uh, thoracotomy also. So for cosmetic reasons, sometimes we are able to do a very small incision through a very small incision under the breast, especially for females who are uh, conscious of their scar. So we are able to give a small scar and still be able to close a large hole. So treatment wise, there are two main methods, surgical method and the device closure method. The device closure method is a preferred method and those that are not suitable are sent for open heart surgery. Now, how is a follow up after somebody undergoes uh, these procedures and how is the prognosis? Well, the prognosis is excellent for an atrial septal defect. Once the defect is closed, slowly the hemodynamics uh, get back to normal. The shunt which was the blood crossing the hole is stopped. The heart typically slowly over you know three months comes back to normal size and their hemodynamic derangement is restored. We see these um, children or adults uh, maybe two three times in the first year and after that they are spaced out their follow-ups are spaced out when they come we look at their electrocardiogram to see if there are any rhythm abnormalities we get them an echocardiogram meaning an imaging of the heart to see how the chambers are uh, decreasing in size how the valves are flowing how the device is sitting or how the patch is uh, healing and to see whether there's any residual shunt so their follow-up typically requires a, a consultation by a pediatric cardiologist, an ECG and an echocardiogram. Their prognosis overall is excellent. Most of them have, men, majority of them or all of them have a normal lifestyle, a normal physical activity uh, capability and a normal survival. Now those patients that are complicated by pulmonary vascular disease, they may have some residual pulmonary hypertension and the consequences of that. But other than that, most patients have an excellent follow up and an excellent life. Thank you very much.